This is Grand Tap Media Breathing the Grand Show, your host, Pamela Kime. Once again here to introduce you to one of your neighbors in West Michigan. The spirit of the show is to help West Michigan become neighbors. And boy, do I have a very special neighbor for you to meet. Very dear to my heart, this organization. Uh, most of you that know me know that I love golf. And it is now the season of golf. And this organization, you might have seen around, it is a national organization. But here in West Michigan, they are introducing our youth to the love of golf. So I want to introduce Andre Pello from First Tee of West Michigan. Welcome, Andre. I'm so happy you're here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So let's just start. Let's, what we do here on um, Breathing the Grand Show, we just tap right in it. Okay. and start talking about so I want you to talk about what First Tee is why it started and why you got involved in this great mission sure. which it is a mission right because it is a nonprofit for sure yep. and, um, and it is a way of introducing our youth into golf mm -hmm. and because you see all of the great attributes that golf can give a person because you experienced it yourself mm -hmm. being a pro Mm -hmm. And I didn't wanted to share that right away. He is a pro golfer, and he does give lessons. And you did play in the circuit, or you were involved in pro golf on the national level, going to um, some of the tournaments or whatever. Well, more so of let's more talk of about that, sure, right? Sure. So let's tap right in. Talk about, first of all, let's slow me down. First Tee, the mission, and how you got involved in that. Sure. Okay. Well, First Tee, like you said, is a nonprofit organization that teaches life skills and core values through the game of golf. So golf is our tool to help students explore themselves and to learn something new at the same time. Golf is a unique sport, as you know, heard you say earlier, and I know from my time as, as the head professional at Quail Ridge years ago um, that you love the game of golf. Uh, but it's an individual sport, and when you have successes out there, they're your successes. And when you have failures, they're your failures. So it's a very, very good game to explore yourself and with the core values kind of intertwined in. Um, we think that we're helping students to learn who they can become, um, and, and obviously mentoring our students is, is the most important thing. So it's kind of the basis for who we are. Um, obviously for me, I'm a PGA professional, um, been playing the game of golf since the age of four, so I've had good experiences um, and some bad experiences that I've learned from, <laughs> yeah. uh, from being on the golf course. Um, so um, I believe that it's a sport that's unique in the sense, like I said, you're an individual and I think you grow more in that sport because of that than any other sport. Uh, my passions have always been to help um, other people. Um, I think I get that from my mother, um, who was an educator um, in the Lansing School District, had her PhD in child psychology. Yeah, when you sent me your bio and you sent me a little bit about your mom, mm -hmm. I went, what an inspiration. That must have been growing up. Yes. Did she love golf? She did not love golf. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the one unique thing about her, but what she did love was her community and she loved the people in it to where she gave her life to helping all of those, not just the people that were in our family, uh, but pretty much anyone that, that needed assistance in the community. She was one of those people that always had a helping hand. And she passed away? Yes. In, yep. in how long ago was that? She passed away about five years ago, um, pulmonary hypertension. Oh, wow. Um, ironically, you know, after she retired. Um, and I remember, um, you know, one quick story about her. Um, in those last few days of her life, I remember my principal uh, from the years uh, that I went, went to school um, in the Lansing School District coming to visit her and, and, and wanting to pray with her and, and just have a moment with her. And her concern wasn't about herself. Her concern was about the school and the community and what was going on. So I always, I always remember that, and, and it helps me to, to stay energized and motivated to help others. Well, then, how did you get into golf? Well, golf, <laughs> not my mother, uh, but my father. Um, I'm the baby okay. of, of four, four boys, um, and my brothers were way older than me. Um, so I spent a lot of time with my father. Um, he picked up the sport for business reasons. Um, he worked for General Motors, um, I believe, as a, a salesman at the time. And obviously, golf, another aspect of golf that's great for young people to learn. It is a social sport. It is. And business is done on the golf course. So oh, he yeah. had to learn the game. And with me being four or five years old, I spent a lot of time with my father, and that's actually how I, I started playing the game. Does your brothers, does your other siblings play? They play a little bit. Um, okay. But, you know, like I tell a lot of people, I, I am the best athlete and the <laughs> best golfer. Um, and, and the only one that, that played in college and, and really pursued a career uh, with the sport or any sport. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you, okay, let's, let's talk about that, because I know that you are a pro. 
mm -hmm. um, at golf, and there's a difference of you know us that delve in it as a as a hobby, right? Than to actually play and learn the techniques and be as good as you are, right. and, and looking at a possibility of going into the pros. Right. I mean, I, I will tell you, golf is uh, bigger than it ever was. Correct. And I know that um, there was some instrumental people people that brought that about, like Tiger Woods and, mm -hmm. and things like, we'll talk a little bit about him, but talking about golf, it's just like, it's my husband and I look at it, you can't, this is how it goes on during we're mm -hmm. watching it. You can't blame anybody else. Correct. You know, you have right. your coach, but it's you mm -hmm. only. You can't say it, the ball was never given to you. Right. You didn't get a chance. You get up there just like everybody else. You yep. have to earn your spot, of mm -hmm. course, in, in, in the PGA. And there is no one else you can blame. And it is basically a lot of it is of mine. Correct. That with all those people. Yep. Now, Andre, how do you hit? With all those people, I I just well, I mean, come on. <laughs> well, well Pamela, I think it's just like anything else, and and one of the core values we teach is perseverance. So, what I'll tell you, just like you know, life and and any other thing that we go through, the first time you do something, it's very difficult. So I can remember the first time hitting ball, hitting a golf ball in a tournament where there was a big crowd, and and you're nervous and. You may struggle because of it, but if you learn from those moments and, and you remember those moments in the right manner, I think you, you become better and, and you persevere. And, and those moments to me now, I, I enjoy those moments, believe it or not. Um, and, and when the nerves you know, are, are there, uh, I think that, that I perform better in, in those situations. Did you meet a lot of people? I have excited when you were out there. Did you oh, yeah. meet a lot of the pros? And oh, sure. You know what I mean? It, sure. And that's, that's the one thing that, that we always like to clear up is, as PJ professionals, um, we, we aren't necessarily the, the ones you see on TV, the touring pros. I did play in college. I was a decent player. Which college did you attend? I played at Tennessee State University. Okay. Um, it's a historically black university um, in Nashville, um, Division One in the Ohio Valley Conference. So Division One. Division One okay. school. Um, and, and very proud of, of my experiences down there. Um, but you know, once again, PGA professionals do a lot within the game of golf. Even though you don't see us on TV, like a Tiger Woods, like a Ricky Fowler. Um, we are the ones that maybe are setting up the tournament. We are the ones that are maybe instructing those players from behind. You know, Tiger Woods always has a PGA professional who assists him with his, his training prior to tournaments and, and throughout the season. So we, we have roles in, in at Quail Ridge, as right, you right. see. Um, you know, you have a great PGA professional there in, in Gary now. Um, and, and you see his role there is more operations and making sure that the facility is, is, is run correctly and that you have the customer service. So we are very, very versatile in the, in the roles that we have within the golf business. And pretty much whenever you see golf, there is a PGA professional who's done something behind the scenes to kind of, you know, be a part of that, that, that picture. But what, did you start, okay, when you were in college, then mm -hmm. you started to see that you possibly could go pro or what uh, they, yes. they, and, we, and do they always veer you towards that it's well, like I, I think I think what it is too and, and no different than, than any other young person when you start playing any sport like a young basketball player yeah. who's you want to be like Michael Jordan right maybe a Kobe Bryant maybe a LeBron James now right. right and and Tiger Woods was one of those people for me another guy by the name of Payne Stewart was one for me so I think early on the idea was to become a professional but those guys you see on TV, the slogan, those guys are good, they really are good. Right. And they're you know, the top 0.5% of all golfers in relation to their ability. I may be in the top 3%, but those guys are way better <laughs> than me. So I think in, in the college years, um, with my successes and struggles, I figured that that wouldn't be a path that made sense for me. And it's a hard life as well. I mean, if you're not a person that's winning in... in you know, achieving a lot out yeah, there, traveling from place to place. It's different when you have millions of dollars and can take, you know, planes and things. If it, if you're that person who's just on tour, barely making it, you may have to take a van around the country. And you can live imagine. Live your car. Correct. David had live stories of all those guys. That he, correct. He always had a heart for, he's got these one, he's been living out of his car yes. for five years. Yep. Or he almost lost his sponsor. Yep. Um, and... Yep. You know, it losses. I mean, there's all kinds of things that go on. Of course, we always see that only what's on, on Correct. television, right? Correct. Sometimes I wish they would show some of the ones that aren't doing as well. Like <laughs> right. Dustin Johnson's my favorite, right? right. If he's not the top 10, you don't get a lot of airing. You exactly. wish that they would play. Like, I want to watch Dustin go through 18 holes, right? Yeah. 
I don't, you know what I mean? Because right. you just want to watch one of your pros. But I meant, so you probably learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And so you're bringing that the first tee. So talk about, when you say core values, that first tee, I, I could tell you what golf brought, has brought to me, and, and, I, and, no, and you can see that in my life, what it's taught me. But what, the core, what, what are the core values? The core okay. values, there's nine of them, and you're putting me on the spot. It's always hard to do Well, do the nine. top three. But I think I can do all nine. Let's see if we can Really? Do. Okay. Let's see. So we have respect, honesty, courtesy. Then we have responsibility, confidence, sportsmanship. Then we have integrity, perseverance, and judgment. So Whoa, very that. good. Ed. There go. <laughs> so. Those are great core values. Of course, no, yes. nobody would disagree with those. Yep. Okay, so now you're in this organization. So how did you get introduced to First Tee? Was it like they came to you or you just well, saw the, the first permission? First Tee, you know, obviously, you know, like you mentioned early on, we, we are a nationwide organization yes. that, that has commercials and... Um, you know, in times like the, the, the majors of, of golf and on the LPGA Tour, the PGA Tour. So I've always noticed the first tee symbol. And, you know, through my time working in the golf business, the first tee of West Michigan grew. Right. Um, our executive director, Tyler Smees, began our chapter in 2011 and has grown it to where now we are um, assisting almost 1,100 students as of 2018. Uh, within our program and they've accumulated almost 15,000 hours of, in, of in instruction and program with us and not only the golf piece but the core value piece and Tyler um, you know as a as a person that leads our organization he's doing an excellent job in, in creating an environment to where we help not just those that are affluent but we also look to assist those that are on free and reduced lunch. So typically on any given year, at least 50% of our student base, out of all those students that we are assisting, are through partnerships or assist with us on scholarship and do not pay a fee or no more than $5 for a six week course. And that's the passion and the heart and the mission of our individual chapter. And that's why I love working for the First Tee of West Michigan. Oh my gosh, and so is that the, the goal of First Tee is mm -hmm. to Go in to the is it is it the lower income the at risk what is yes. the what is the mission on that I uh, mean because there's probably some kids out there maybe they're you know middle class or a little bit upper and their parents aren't really into golf but they they would yeah. like to try it I think everybody I wish I would have been introduced right, to it when right. I was younger and I think you that's know? the basis of it we want to expose everyone to the game and our mission is about providing educational programs that instill life enhancing values for all kids and trying to build character with all, within all those students because we understand what golf can do for a young person. I was one of those students, one of those young people that was dropped off at the golf course and had a lot of experiences just on the putting green or just on the driving range or just playing nine holes with myself or with friends. So we know that there are things that can be learned. You pair that up with the core values, with the life skills, with the healthy habits that we're teaching students, and we think we think that we're giving them, you know, a, a pretty good head start into young adulthood and into their professional life. Well, 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 what what have you seen over time? You've been in the organization mm -hmm. what three, 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 three years? Three years. Uh, yep, three years as an employee, about a um, little under five, if you add in the volunteer time that I've been there. And, and what have you seen with the kids? I mean, yes. you've been into it, and like I said, I see you on social media. Mm -hmm. I follow you on uh, social media. And it's fun. And and where? <laughs> hey, and so a, a, a person, a, a young youth that you brought in, or mm -hmm. you've been working with. I mean, how do they stay with golf? Or they? How's this work? The, the stories. The stories vary. And and what we see, and, and once again, golf is an individual sport. So. Our programs are set up, and that's why we need great volunteers and why we need right. good people to assist. We're trying to help those individual kids and answer those individual questions. Some of our students go on to become great golfers, and even as a young organization, this year we have two participants, upper-level participants, um, that are now going to play in college. One's going to Grand Rapids Community College, uh, Dominic Luciani, okay. and um, our um, girl, um, Lindsey Reens, is going to be playing golf at Aquinas College this year. So these are our first two college golfers. Really? I think that shows oh success. Oh, we yeah. also have a graduate from our program that is currently going through the PGM uh, program at Fair State University. And we're very excited about that. He sits on the student board there. And one quick story about him, I ran into him um, at the PJ Merchandise Show recently. I am a PJ lead, um, which is um, a program designed to create more diversity within the ranks of PGA boards and governing bodies within, within our member base. 
and the PJ merchandise show was a big time where a lot of conferences and meetings are happening. And I happened to run into Andrew, um, I, I believe, in the, in the lunch area. Um, and he was there with Fair State and his PGM program. And once again, I thought that that showed the success of our program. Right, right. And showed kids that started in our program from a young age going through our program and now achieving, you know, greatness. Well, I do, I do, I, I did discover, and which I've always heard, but never when I started golfing, I, you, you, you've known my husband longer mm -hmm. um, than I have, actually. Yep. You know, and uh, when he introduced me to golf and we're getting out there, and I can't tell people enough about how you can build a relationship in 18 holes. Yes. Because I think you really have to encompass fun, mm -hmm. right? The outdoors elements of what, you know, when you're out there, you know that when you get out and golf. And then the you can get the mindset of somebody, their patience, yes. their perseverance, their obstacles, their struggles, um, their, their their little little achievement. You know what it is? They can, right. oh, yeah. you can mess up on on a drive, but on a, but you can putt in. Correct. You know, and you it's just like woohoo! That's right. Yep. That's exactly. you, know, right. you know what I mean? You can just pick and 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 to be able to pick up your ball and go on to the next hole. Mm -hmm. Say as a result, because it's going to be a different. It's not right. gonna, you're not hitting the same holes. You yep. Just pick it up, and that's how David taught me how to do. He taught me how to pick up my ball. I used to move it by him, mm -hmm. which I'll tell the ladies if they are people that starting, that's the best way. Right. I think when you get out there, you don't get to struggle, right? right? And then you just pick up the ball and go to the person that's the really the better have golfer. Fun. Yep, that, that's have, exactly it. And I, I, I will take people on the golf course any day. And, I, and, I, and I'll tell you, as a, as a PJ professional, I encourage that, that behavior. And our, 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 our goal as PGA professionals and, and members is to make sure that we're inclusionary nowadays and that we're making sure that golf is available for that person that doesn't want to play a lot of holes or maybe is a little slower or maybe wants to play three holes. The typical format is what, nine or 18? Right. But now we know that we want to we want to make sure that everyone that wants to play golf can play golf the way that they want. That's why you see things like Top Golf, more of the Oh yeah. You know the the fun range with a little game attached to it, mm -hmm. or par three courses are now becoming popular. So we want to make sure that golf is available for everyone, um, every ability type, um, and, and the inclusion piece is very very important, especially for me as a minority PGA professional. I want to make sure that I'm an image to those that want to play golf, that I'm a person that they can go to and ask questions about the game, because I want to change the dynamic of what golf looks like nowadays. Well, okay, so if I was coming to you and uh, uh, as with the youth, mm -hmm. what would be, let's start off, if, um, I'm meeting you at, a, at an event, mm -hmm. and, I'm saying, and you're sharing all the benefits, because you do that all the time yep. with First Team, and then what, what would you tell me if I was a mom and I had, you know, maybe four kids, because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I don't take this, the world, but I would put my kids in golf yes. early, because it is a life sport. Yes, it it's is. It's a relationship sport. Correct. And uh, my daughter gets into basketball and things like that, and I, and I gave her a set of golf clubs, mm -hmm. uh, clubs, and I said, you need to network now. Right. You're an adult. Correct. I go, nobody's going to be playing. You play a little basketball when you're 40 year old, 50. Right. But, but you, not, not, as, not as much as you <laughs> I never go to events, and they say, let's get a basketball game together. Right. The first thing that talks about the table, let's get a golf game together, <laughs> exactly. right? But, um, you know, what would you be, I, I, I would say if I was a young mother or a parent, Mm -hmm. And I would say, introduce your kid to golf. Yes. I'm telling you, that's yes. going to change and their career, their life, their skills. Yep. What would you say to me if I was like, you know, why should I get my kid in golf? Well, what I'll tell you is, is obviously the benefits of the organization. It's just not about golf. It's also about life skills, providing a safe environment for young people to grow in. And I think that's what we provide at the First Tee of West Michigan. For the game of golf, um, or excuse me, for um, um, a parent, you know, we, we talk about parents, we also talk about contributors and volunteers. So on the parent piece, I want them to see a class. I want them to, to observe from afar what we're doing um, when we have a class. I want them to research or check our Facebook page or look at our website and, and see the images and videos that show what we're doing with their students so that they get a picture or image of what golf can look like. We all think we have an image of what golf is, and it's right. a pompous, rich, boring, elite, boring <laughs> all these things that, that have labeled golf in a certain light, right. and I don't believe it's that. I think it's more of an environment where people can learn. It's competitive. It's for bright people. 
math is involved. So there's places to learn and grow on the golf course, and that's what I, I want parents to see. From a student perspective, this is one of my, my best skill sets, making it fun, <laughs> right? Making sure that the, the students are having fun when they're with me and the time with us. We have certain incentives and games that we play with the kids to make it fun. Now, most importantly, from a contributor, volunteer standpoint, we talk about our three C's. We talk about coaching, being a volunteer coach. We talk about um, connecting, joining one of our committees, and eventually maybe joining our board. We have a lot of committees that are focused in different areas of what we do. Mm -hmm. And that last one is contributing. Obviously, as a nonprofit organization, we need people to assist us financially as we're providing programs for free for those on free and reduced lunch or as little as $5 for them and no more than $70 for a six-week course. Um, you know, providing nine hours of instruction for 70 to $75 full price for those that are not on free and reduced lunch. Are you going into, how are you um, introducing people to First Tee? I mm -hmm. know people see it, mm -hmm. that, you know, because your logo is um, all over the place. But I mean, are you going into schools? Are you going yes. to churches? How are you getting your message out? Yes, we, we, are, we are building relationships within the community. And this is one thing that I'm passionate about and, and very, very happy that our growth is showing those relationships are increasing in numbers. We all have a different uh, um, personality, but we all have the same passion in, in growing what we're doing in the community. We're very excited about a relationship we're building with the city of Grand Rapids. Um, we just received a $20,000 grant to bring out um, over 650 eighth and ninth graders from Grand Rapids Public Schools out to Indian Trails for a golf experience over a two week time period. And we're very, very excited about this opportunity to introduce golf to that many students at Indian Trails Golf Course. They just remodeled, didn't they? How's that looking? Correct, it's great. <laughs> and we have our first tee classes there as well. Okay. And like you said, it's a very visible course right there on Kalamazoo and 28th yes. Street. Yes. And you know, when I'm doing classes there, a lot of people see, a mm -hmm. lot of people ask questions about what we're doing. And our job is to do a better job of having literature at all the facilities that we do um, operate at. And we operate at multiple facilities in West Michigan, um, not just in Grand Rapids, but also in Muskegon. And now in Holland, we're also starting to establish a base. And so we're growing throughout West Michigan and we want to make ourselves available to the community. Um, we are doing a pretty good job of, of being vocal, and the community's done a good job. Groups like yourself, right. Fox, um, you know, other local news stations have, have done a good job of giving us a platform. And uh, we're very happy about where we are, but we have more work to do. Right, and can be, even though uh, we don't want people to know it's a, a rich sport, right? That's right. the kind of the, 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 the people and get that. Not. And it's not, <laughs> trust me, because believe me, uh, and but there is a, there is a cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, from ba just getting a bat, you play basketball. You just have to have basketball shoes, whatever. Yeah. There is equipment involved, and once you get into it, you you want to there, get there the is. right fitted equipment there is. to do yes. well. So how does that work for these kids that are that are kind of growing? Yeah. So you got these little kids. And next year you could get them in this golf. They, right. They're gonna have to get it fitted again. Yeah. Well, that that's once again where we're, we're blessed in West Michigan and. In, in the success that we've had and how the community has supported us. Um, with golf clubs, um, donations are big for us. And um, with Do you have a drive or do you have like you send out? Cause so sometimes we do and we're, we're lucky enough that we, we, we get donations on a consistent basis. Oh good. Um, we've had assistance from golf clubs in the area with um, their older lost equipment, um, private clubs as juniors grow out of things and, and things are just laying around. Um, they tend to get those over to us, so we're, we're very, very fortunate to have good relationships with a lot of uh, um, donors um, of, of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, we always tell people that, look, we, we don't want you to decipher what's good and what's not. Bring everything to us and let us make that decision. We have the ability to cut things to certain lengths, regrip sure. them, um, and we're, we're always looking for left-handed equipment. Oh. Isn't um, that the truth? My daughter's left-handed, right? Because it's very good for junior golfers, a little lighter flex, uh -huh. senior equipment. So anything that you have, bring it to us, um, either to our home office or connect us through through our website or our email. And, and, and that's a good way to, to go that way. In relation to playing the game of golf outside of us, there's programs, um, the GAM, the GAM, uh, Golf Association of Michigan, um, is funded um, uh, a, a opportunity called Youth on Course, okay. um, which several courses in the area, including Indian Trails, um, Stormy Creek is another one, um, and I believe there's a few more in the area, um, where you are a member for $5, for a $5 fee you get a card, 
and that allows your junior golfer to play anywhere nine holes for five dollars and the the way that the program works is that the individual course is reimbursed at the end of the year the difference between that five dollar and their regular rate so it works out for them to make the revenue that they they want for that full round but it gives that student or that person of a lower income the opportunity to play golf um, four or five dollars and once again we have programs within the first tee with those donated clubs i want my students playing golf right. we want our students to have opportunities to play actual golf competitive golf even working up into high school and maybe even to college so our goal is to give them opportunities incentives to earn golf clubs that's a part of our program and it's a part of what we do they grow out of clubs we want to give them clubs that fit them and with professionals like myself and other people that assist with our programs, you know, we think that we're, we're, we're filling that void pretty well. Well, okay, Colin, what, what do you have coming up so for first day the at biggest, West Michigan? The, the, the most uh, uh, recent activity or the newest activities that we have coming in, um, we have our uh, Grand Rapids uh, Public School clinic, Clinics that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, the eighth and ninth graders that are coming out, um, about 40 to 50 students at a time. Um, and that will start, I believe, April 12th okay. and run um, for about uh, 20 days, over the next 20 days. So, um, and that starts April 12th? Starts April 12th. Okay. Um, and we are going to be working um, with several middle schools and high schools in the area. Students will be bussed out. And I mentioned that we need volunteers. We need okay. a lot of volunteers. So please go to our website. Um, so what type of volunteers? You did just What would the volunteers be required on something? Well, what, we're, what we're looking for, we're looking for mentors to assist with our stations that we'll have set up uh, for our golf experiences. So I am looking for golf-minded people. I'm not looking for great golfers, just people that understand golf etiquette and have played um, for at least a year. Um, and would like to mentor young people. Um, so, you know, we're no one specific. Okay. You know, we have a lot of uh, retired uh, individuals that assist. We have um, college people that will be assisting, college athletes, other college golfers. Okay. Um, and we're just looking for more good people to assist because over that time frame of having classes and we're looking for at least a three hour commitment each day, um, up to six each day. And um, so it so goes all day, morning, night, morning, afternoon? We have two, afternoon? two sessions each day. So we're going to have a morning session between 8.30 to 11.30, another one that's between like 12.30 and 2.30, okay. where we want those people to come around 11.30. So uh, those are the two um, uh, time frames over that. Um, and then our spring registration has started. So we are now um, open for registration. Um, our website, thefirsttwestmichigan.org, um, is a good place to start um, for a course nearest um, to where you are, right. um, either north, south, um, east, west in Grand Rapids, as well as Muskegon and Holland. Um, so we have a lot of classes, um, and a lot of opportunities to get involved with what we do. Uh, have you ever, real quickly, have you ever thought about um, getting, um, you might have already, mm -hmm. ARP organization? They have, we, we well, have. because they, they a lot, you know, there's mm -hmm. 55 and older, there's people that are retiring. Yep. And they're always looking for volunteer opportunities. You know what I mean? It's yep. a big organization. Yep. And we're, we're always looking to build relationships like that. And, you know, and anyone that's interested, you know, once again, we love to reach out and have a conversation with you. We've had good relationships recently. Uh, one example of that is Farmers Insurance. Um, we've okay. built a great relationship with them. Maybe the credit union. The credit unions. David, we've good, had some, you know? some conversations with that. We'd love to talk to David uh, in regards to that. Okay. Uh, I don't want to put him on the spot there. I know. Uh, we won't. We'll be uh, adding this out. We're like, you know what? Thanks a lot, honey. We, we, we do. <laughs> we, we had that assistance uh, right. with, with sponsorship for our, something like our outing or assisting with our PGA Junior League or our in-house uh, golf league that exposes kids to competitive golf in different formats. So well, there's a lot of different ways to help. Day and bring some of these yep. easy o to give to, to do these kids. You know what I mean? They yep. could all do it and then they get to go play golf right after or something yep. like that. You yep. know what we're, I mean? We're open, we're open for all those things as long as we're exposing kids to you know, the, the, the professionalism and, and the different things that they can become as they grow and, and they mature as young people. So you've been, so, we'll get uh, the message out. Get well, the message you, out. You know, I love, love promoting golf, and uh, yes. maybe we'll be able to, to play some golf at uh, Quail Ridge this summer. We'd We're always to looking to it. bring people to our golf course. Love that facility. <laughs> great, great golf course. Good people. Andre, <laughs> hello. Thank you so much from First Tee of West Michigan Thank being you. on our show, Thanks. and we are so happy to promote golf here Thank at you. Grand Tamp Media. All right, everybody, you have a great day, and we will see you next time on Breathing the Grand Show. This is Pamela Kime. Bye.